CQC, Steve, as our Chief Inspector of General Practice. Um, we're here today in your surgery in Birmingham. Could you tell us a little bit about you know, your background and how you've actually come to be at CQC? Well, welcome to Bellevue and uh, it's great to have you here. I'm a GP here in inner city Birmingham. Um, uh, very proud to be a GP. I've been a GP since 1986 and uh, from a career point of view I've been involved in GP education and led the Royal College of GPs a few years ago. And the great thing about this practice is it's an inner city practice. We have a, a very multicultural group of staff as well as patients. Um, we uh, train um, medical students as well as um, junior doctors, um, both uh, GP registrars who are going to become GPs but also sports medicine um, specialists as well. I also volunteer and have been helping um, the Nishkam um, Centre in uh, Soho Road in, in Birmingham. I grew up in the black country and my grandparents lived in, uh, in Smethwick, that, that very near Hansworth, which is, which is a very, very deprived, even more deprived than we are now here in Birmingham. And, and the Sikh Gurdwala is, is looking at how it can improve the health of all the people across that very, very deprived area, not just the Sikh community, uh, but there are also people from different backgrounds there as well. And I really admire what they're doing. Working here in a deprived area, volunteering in a different part of Birmingham, I'm trying to put something back into the, to the communities where I grew up. Everything I've done in my career is about improving the quality of care that we can provide uh, for, uh, for patients wherever they live in England. And I've just come from the, um, the new NHS England as the Deputy Medical Director responsible for addressing health inequalities and advancing equality. And so moving to CQC is quite a natural progression in that we're here in CQC to ensure that all patients, regardless of their background or income or status, have the same great quality uh, access to general practice and quality treatment. Some people may not have actually realised that you were a practising GP and you're obviously passionate about health inequalities. How do you think that you're actually going to be able to influence the work of CQC? I wanted to be a GP from when I was a, a young lad. But the two drives were around doing something useful for patients and um, trying to address health inequalities. A lot of the variation in healthcare is unacceptable. And so um, there are ways of addressing that. One of them, I, th I believe, is to make sure we've got very clear standards for general practice and make sure that practices are all above that bottom line. Perhaps what's also important is that we um, celebrate fantastic practice. We've got some of the best GPs in the world in this country, but they're let down by very few who aren't providing the care that patients need. When I go into practices across the country, I, I do understand the pressure that practices are under, and hopefully that will help me um, get a better understanding um, of the practices we're inspecting. You've just published a document which sets out our approach to uh, GPs and out-of-hour services. What are you hoping to achieve with this document? Well, very simply, uh, as a signposting document, it, 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 it is to show GPs, nurses, managers, and most importantly, the people we serve, which is the public uh, and patients across England, that uh, we're going to take this uh, agenda very seriously. We're going to bring in a system which um, monitors practices um, intelligently using information, data and patient feedback. We're going to um, start from April a series of clinically led inspections of practices. And then what we're going to do is rate those practices and we're going to publish all of that information so that patients and doctors know whether their practice is, is outstanding or good, needs improvement or is inadequate, um, so that GPs can improve their care and patients will know uh, where's good and where's not good. But it's really important to celebrate success, learn from what other people are doing, but have a very low uh, tolerance of poor practice and a zero tolerance 
of really dangerous practice. But we're also going to be looking at the most vulnerable in society and ensuring that GPs provide good care for them as well. GPs have only been inspected by CQC for a very short time. Mm -hmm. How do you think that they feel about that and the work that we're doing with them? Well, I think uh, there's a lot of um, worry out there amongst GPs. Um, I think understandably for many GPs who are not used to have been inspected. So um, I think GPs are worried because they don't know what they don't know. I think also um, our visits will be much better when we've got clinicians involved because what I've heard and observed are really, really good, well-intended inspectors. But because many of them haven't worked in general practice, they don't understand the context of how we work uh, and, and how it's very difficult in many practices like this one in, in Birmingham when the amount of funding varies across the country, uh, the access to nursing varies across the country and so the context is really important. What I have observed are really good inspectors who are good at making judgments in the poorest of practices but as we start to look at better practices and we look at why practices fail in more detail, you need a GP and you need a nurse there as well. You're not only going to be responsible for GPs and out-of-hours services but also dentists. Mm. What other services are going to be under your remit and how are you going to manage such a wide remit? We have uh, prisons and secure environments. Uh, I'm responsible for the child safeguarding across the country which is no small task in itself but we do have an excellent a very experienced team. We're going to be more involved in medicines management and we have to uh, manage the controlled drugs policy as well so we have a really good team there which we will we will also expand. Um, and perhaps the most important thing even with respect to general practice is the role leading on integrated services because as health and social care move forward the current models are not sustainable. More care in its broadest sense should happen outside hospital uh, and that means working closely with um, our, our really inspirational chief inspectors Mike Richards in hospital and Andrea Sutcliffe in adult social care so that we we look at care not just hospital or general practice or social care. Whilst you've been at CQC what issues have you identified in GP and primary medical care that you think need to change and, and the sector needs to improve? Mm. Well, it isn't since I've been in CQC. Um, I've only got to go home and listen to my parents who tell me they find it really difficult getting access to their GP to, to get an appointment on that day. And, and I know how difficult it is as a GP because we have similar difficulties here sometimes when it's really, really busy. And so I, I know that GPs, all of us, will have to change how we work and work in different ways in future to meet the needs of those patients. And because um, elderly patients need much more continuity, they need to name GP, uh, whereas the working age uh, patients often just want access where they're working, there, there are different demands on GPs. But we've now completed around about a thousand visits. And so whilst all of the practices have those similar issues about access, um, and many are trying to improve that in different ways, uh, I've been really quite disappointed in, in how a small number of practices have just really not delivering the care that I would expect for me or, or my family. Whilst the headlines at the moment are around hospitals and deaths of patients, which are tragic for everyone, the problems you can have in very poor practice, people are only just starting to understand. A number of my colleagues have been saying, you know, you're talking a lot about very poor practice, and these are only small numbers. They are, they are of course, right. These are small numbers. But tragically, they can touch the hearts of many, many hundreds of people. And so one of the reasons why it's important to share these stories is not to alarm patients, but it's to actually suggest to GPs they need to check the basic processes they have in their surgeries. And if we can do that and be open and transparent, then we can improve the safety, uh, the effectiveness uh, of, of healthcare by GPs. And importantly, are well-led. If you have a well-led 
surgery, which looks after its staff, gives them regular education, uh, provides educational opportunities outside the practice if they need them, that asks patients what they think about the service and improves their service based on that feedback, that monitors significant events, that audits their care. You've got a practice which is a continually learning environment, which is safer for, for patients. Thank you, Steve. My pleasure. Come again to Bellevue.